welcome back to Wax on Wednesdays. I'm excited to be back and um, as a lot of you know, I had a, an illness in the family this summer, so I was not able to uh, to film any of the, the Wax on Wednesdays and I'm really excited to be back. And I also have a new microphone in the studio, uh, so hopefully that uh, will help as well and uh, sound a little bit more natural and also I don't have to raise my voice to talk to you. Today I wanted to just do a quick demonstration of uh, finishes that you can do with encaustic and using different mediums. When you're painting with different mediums in your studio, you don't always have to uh, create an encaustic, a uh, full encaustic painting uh, in order to use encaustic. You can also use it as a finish for some different mediums, any medium really except for acrylic. And today I wanted to show you a finish using it as a finish on your watercolor paintings and I'm just going to show a little demonstration about how to apply the finish to a finished painting but uh, if you are in the wax on Wednesdays project group on Facebook with me then uh, we are going to do a full um, painting and abstract painting and also uh, one of the floral paintings uh, and add a add an encaustic finish to it after that and uh, a little bit a little bit more uh, in depth with little things you can do with some texture and whatnot and uh, also if you are in the upcoming encausticology 101 online workshop we are going to be working uh, in landscapes on uh, with the watercolor and then of course adding that uh, as a finish too and just some some beautiful things with watercolor uh, in encausticology 101 online workshop that's coming up on September 21st. If you've already registered, I'm excited to have you join me. And I'm just gonna go over a little bit about how I do these paintings. I use, um, for these I'm just using Canson watercolor paper. It's a 140 pound paper, and I would say it's probably the equivalent of a student grade paper. I use it a lot in the workshops. It takes a beating. Uh, it works great for a lot of people use it for acrylic and watercolor and mixed media and it's a and next time I might show you the artist grade papers which I like to work with the arches as well uh, watercolor paper but uh, the Canson is just kind of a universal great paper to to play around with and and work with and I love testing out all paper with wax as long as it's an absorbent paper um, it accepts the wax every paper accepts the wax differently and it's kind of a great just a great exploration to try out different papers and see uh, how the wax uh, how it accepts the wax and the translucency level and uh, it's kind of just kind of a magical uh, thing to play around with different papers so for this one today we're going to use Canson and also I've mounted it on to these masonite boards I got these boards at the hardware store at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's I can't remember which but I asked them to cut them down for me into these six by six squares I love working with these practice boards in the studio and they were good enough to cut them down for me if you go to your local hardware store they may charge you for a couple of the cuts uh, depending on how many that you want uh, cut down but uh, I'm pretty sure they will do them for you mine did and I mount the Canson water paper onto it first with a uh, you can use uh, multiple things to mount the paper I used a PVA book binders glue and uh, you can also use a spray adhesive or a double tack a photographer's double tack paper any of those things are going to work fine you want to make sure that you have a brayer or something to make sure that there's no air bubbles or anything when you mount it. It's nice and flat and adhered to the surface well. And, and I did use the 140 pound watercolor paper. It works better when you're using watercolors. It's a little bit thicker when you go to add the encaustic to it, but as far as watercolor, I like to use that heavier weight. Uh, and any mixed media so it can take a beating especially if I'm doing some sort of abstract painting uh, or a wet on wet wash with a watercolor I want to use that heavier grade paper so here I just have a a floral 
and uh, this is uh, watercolors and let's see this is mostly Winsor Newton this is mostly Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors and also some Holbein uh, artists gauche and that's what I used to do these and now I'm just going to take a clear encaustic medium any uh, encaustic medium that has purified beeswax and damar resin in it and this is a clear and I'm just going to add it right over my dried painting I love the way it looks on my watercolor paintings and to me it's just not finished of course unless I've added encaustic to it and of course that's the encaustic artist in me but I just love this as a finish and now that I've added a layer of encaustic over the painting I'm going to go ahead and fuse it with a heat gun because I've already mounted paper onto this board I'm always going to use the heat gun in this process and not my torch Okay, and I've gone ahead and given it a second coat of encaustic and then fused that in with the heat gun as well. And you can see the translucency that the paper has become completely translucent underneath the watercolor. And I personally love this dreamy effect. It's kind of like the flowers are floating there and uh, it has a little bit of bloom up here in the corner, but I expect that to almost go away completely when it solidifies and it just gives us this dreamy floating effect to the flowers and I really uh, enjoy that look in my watercolor and this is with two coats painting but this is two layers and it just has that beautiful sort of dreamy effect so let's go ahead and do a landscape and here's one of the watercolor landscapes and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and add a coat of encaust clear encaustic medium and if you like your finish shiny then once this has dried maybe on a six by six probably 24 hours later I after I do this I would go ahead and polish it out with a soft cotton rag or <clears throat> with a soft cotton rag or even some old pantyhose or pantyhose purchased from the dollar store. I cut those up and use those to polish my paintings. I'll wait for a minute for that to solidify and then I'll go ahead and add a second coat. And you can see where the paper has begun to accept the wax in some areas and some areas it hasn't yet and it'll appear this dark cloudy effect for the areas of the paper that have begun to accept the wax so I'm gonna when I fuse the second coat I'm going to fuse uh, most of that in so it has more even tone to it And sometimes you have to wait and see uh, for a minute when it solidifies how much of the paper is accepting the uh, encaustic medium and kind of let it solidify and dry and then go back in and fuse again.
And now I have a more universal tone over it. More of the paper has accepted the wax. There's a couple areas that have, uh, they've accepted so much wax that it's become where you can just feel, still feel the paper. And that happens in watercolor. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch up these areas with some encaustic medium. I'm going to go ahead and add a finish to one more of the watercolor landscapes. And there's the first layer. And the first layer can be kind of scary because you start seeing that uh, paper starting to accept the encaustic medium in certain areas and it looks kind of dark. So it's kind of scary at first, but if you just go back in and add another layer and fuse again and just gently have a little patience with it. Don't get it too hot all at once. You can let it solidify and go back in. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that second coat. And I never stay on it too long, except especially a small size piece like this, which is a six by six. I go in, I keep my hand going in a circular motion with that heat gun, and then I let it uh, solidify for a minute and kind of just let it do its thing and back off of it for a minute and let it solidify. And then if I feel that I need to go back in and touch up an area or go over it again, I'll go back in with the heat gun and hit it again. And picking up to see if there's any little imperfections that I want to fix and I see an area here and here where the encaustic has seeped down right to the board and so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more medium there and there's a couple of little air bubbles and things that I need to go back and fuse just one more time Okay, and so I've used it, what, three times, and the paper has now uh, accepted the encaustic medium and kind of let it do its own thing. I didn't force it and just keep the heat on it nonstop. I let it solidify and then go back in and do it again. And now I'm gonna let this solidify one last time and set it aside to dry. Okay, so you can see these have a lovely dreamy matte finish and this one has a little bit of bloom on it as well and I expect that to get better as it goes on as time goes on and it solidifies a little bit longer um, this one too has just a lovely dreamy really dreamy effect to it when the encaustics added and it's an abstract landscape anyway so I love anything to enhance that kind of uh, dreamy feel to it and I've and of course then there is the floral as well. And it too has a lovely dreamy effect, but I wanted to show you how it looks when it's buffed out and shiny. And it hasn't been 24 hours yet, so I'm hoping this will I'm hoping this will work for us and and get a little bit shiny. I'm gonna go ahead and try it, but as a rule, I would wait about 24 hours for a six by six with just the few layers that we've added. I would usually wait about 24 hours before I went ahead and buffed it out and even longer on a larger painting. And this is just a pantyhose that I got from the dollar store and I cut it up and it gives you several pieces. I've just cut them up and for a dollar you have several buffing cloths. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead, this takes some elbow grease and hopefully the camera doesn't get shaky from me buffing, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go in a circular motion just like when I am fusing. And I see that there's a couple areas on this where the wax needs another coat and I can tell as I buff it out that it's gone down to the paper in this area here. I don't know if you can see it plainly on the camera, but I'll probably go in later and add yet another coat of wax to this piece as well. And that's the great thing too, is even though I'm buffing this right now, I can still go ahead and add another layer of encaustic and build up multiple layers if I want to, I can actually keep going on this. And that's the great thing, another great thing about encaustic. The longer it sits, the harder the finish is going to get and the easier it is to go ahead and buff it out. But it's shining up pretty well. And of course that also makes the part that I need to touch up show that much more as well. That's okay. So I'm always keeping my arm going in a circular motion and just buffing like you would any wax finish. Okay, so this has literally been less than three minutes that I took to polish this six by six painting and you can see how shiny hopefully that that has become in just three minutes of buffing with some pantyhose. And you can also see the little area here better that has the paper showing through here and a little bit here on this flower. But I can go back in now and add another layer of encaustic and do it all over again. And uh, as soon as I fuse it, I can choose once again whether I want it matte finish or to buff it out. And I can make my choices all over again and continue to build if I wanted to. But this is just a one way of finishing your watercolor paintings. And I think that it really just gives just a great effect to watercolor, especially to loose abstract florals, loose abstract, um, <clears throat> loose abstract landscapes. And here's the landscape in a dreamy sort of matte finish without being buffed out and the flowers all shiny. So I hope you enjoyed this week's project with watercolor and encaustic and if you'd like to see a full painting project with the watercolors and encaustic you can always join us in the Wax on Wednesdays uh, project group on Facebook and the link for that is below and also uh, we are doing the whole gamut of a whole section of watercolors and encaustic on encausticology 101 online workshop beginning september 21st and i'm so happy to be back here on wax on wednesdays have fun guys happy creating Bye bye <laughs>